Welcome back, folks, as the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show continues here on The Big Talker, 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. You know, I always like to take just a moment and say thank you to those of you that listen to this program or, or watch it when it gets posted on our website, listingsincharleston.com, or maybe you listen to it in podcast form on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever. Uh, but just wanted to say thanks. It's been, gosh, almost 10 years of me on this program, helping you better understand the real estate market. I just appreciate those of you that listen and, and rely on the information within it to shape your understanding of the market and make informed decisions so that you are better prepared to buy or sell uh, productively and profitably. So let's talk, uh, we, we, if you're just joining, we just talked about what's happening in the market right now. There are some some shifts that have occurred over the past 30 days. There's been a drop in, in my opinion, consumer confidence. There has been a real change in the activities among buyers. We talked about how uh, in the first quarter of this year, we were basically averaging around 12 showings per listing per month. And that has been cut in half as of June. We're seeing a little over six showings per listing per month. We're also seeing price reductions start to increase as people realize that they can't continue to play this game of leapfrog pricing, right? This home listed for 500, I'm gonna list for 515. That one listed for 515, I'm gonna list for 529, so on and so forth. We're starting to see people, rather than continue to, to push the envelope with regard to value, say, I'm going to price my home at what the most recent one sold for, and the people that are doing that are selling and they are still, in some instances, uh, in the higher price points, generating multiple offers on their house. There's still demand out there. The sky is not falling. We still have a shortage of supply overall. So prices in the short term, yes, they might feel like they're stagnant. I do still anticipate there being some price growth. I think it's going to be marginal, though. I think it's going to be very small in the grand scheme of things moving forward. So if you're going to sell your house right now, you know, I did a, I did a segment a few years ago where um, I had uh, been approached by somebody to purchase a property in a different state. It was a flip. And uh, in hindsight, I should have done it. I didn't know this person all that well. I certainly didn't know the market all that well. Um, they were a, a connection through someone else I knew. I'm, a, I'm In addition to my real estate team and, and property management company, I also am a national real estate coach. So I coach other people that sell real estate and that have teams and brokerages that are doing about 150 or so transactions a year that want to do more. That's my sweet spot. So um, I ended up not moving forward with this investment deal, but I interviewed this agent about the plan to sell the property once it was renovated. So you make, you make your money, for those of you that don't know, you make your money on investment real estate when you buy it, not necessarily when you sell it, because you can control how much you buy it for. You can't necessarily control what the market is willing to pay for your house whenever it gets time to put it on the market and ultimately sell it. You can, of course, project those numbers. You can forecast all of that. You can do your financial modeling. You can make sure that the property that you purchase and renovate achieves a return consistent with what you expect. That's, that's you know, you've got to play red light, green light with your investment deals. Uh, but we ended up not moving forward with the investment property. But I interviewed the agent all the same and asked them some very pointed questions about their plan to sell that property once I had purchased it or acquired it and renovated it. And the questions that I asked are questions that I think you, the listener, should be asking agents when you interview them for the process of selling your house. And the reality is this, over the past few years, agents really haven't had to do all that much to sell a house. I, I freely admit this. There has been so much demand that you take some nice photos, your price is somewhat reasonable, you're somewhat in the ballpark, the home is in reasonable condition, and you will have multiple people looking at it and likely multiple offers. It's been an auction for the past several years. Well, that has, that's changing. It's changing pretty rapidly. So now experience and marketing comes back into play. Most agents, frankly, don't have a plan to specifically market your property other than 
what is basically already provided to them as being a member of the MLS. So just understand this, when the property, when your home gets listed for sale and it goes into the MLS, which only real estate agents have access to the MLS, but once that property goes into the MLS, it is then syndicated or broadcasted to all of those websites that people frequent to look at real estate, Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin, so on and so forth. So there's really nothing that agents do to drive traffic to those national websites. People use them already. So between that and then all the other agents that are a member of the MLS that are sending properties to their clients in which you know your home that you're selling would be a fit for that particular buyer, that and the sign in the yard was about all that was needed. Well, now we're starting to see things sit on the market a little bit longer. We're seeing in real time demand shifting more toward what a normal market would look like. Because there is some change in the market and because this change is happening rapidly, people are, you know, they are doom and gloom. The sky is falling. The market's about to crash. And, you know, hey, it might. I'm certainly not an economist, but through my perspective, I don't think we're positioned for a crash, certainly not like what happened in 2008. That's that's my opinion. I don't think we're going to get there. Now, I do think that we are shifting more toward a normal market because we're seeing this increase in inventory. We still need inventory to go way up in order for there to actually be a balance from a supply and demand perspective. But we are seeing some changes in demand, some pretty rapid changes in demand. And that's why it makes sense for you to be better at interviewing your real estate agent. So the first thing that I wanna say with regard to interviewing a real estate agent, we're gonna take a break, we're gonna come back here in just a few minutes, but um, what I would first say is don't let the agent know that you are interviewing multiple agents. Here's a really interesting phenomenon in real estate. The more people you interview, and the more people you tell you're interviewing multiple agents, magically, the more your home is worth. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that when agents know they don't have a lot of value to share other than some experience um, and you know their ability to get along with you, uh, they, they don't have like real tools to market your property proactively, then how do they win your business? They tell you it can sell for more money. The more agents that get involved in the process, the higher that initial asking price is going to go. It's known very commonly in our industry as buying the listing. You tell the seller a price that they want to hear, not, not the truth, but what they want to hear so that you get that seller to agree to work with you. And then, hey, if it doesn't sell, then, well, we can always reduce the price. Well, in this type of a market, sitting on the market for 30 days before adjusting the price isn't really going to help you because we're going to have 30 more days of a slowdown in our market. That's why a lot of people are deciding to put their home on the market now. They want to tap into that equity they've built and they're, they're ready to go. There are also more options available for them to buy. And so they don't feel like, you know, hey, yeah, sure, I could sell my home and I could make a bunch of money based on the equity that I've built. But if I have to go and get into a, you know, a brawl with 10 other buyers to buy a property, it's just not worth it. I'm just, I'm not going to subject myself to that kind of stress. It's un, it's unnecessary. I'll wait it out. That's what a lot of people are thinking. So um, first thing that I would say is don't tell these agents that you're interviewing multiple agents. Let them stand on their own two feet, provide you with an honest opinion on what that home would sell for. And I'm telling you, if these agents are, are walking in and they're not providing you with data and they're not reviewing the data with you that justifies their opinion of value, in other words, if they're not selling you on why it should be priced where they think it should be priced and that it should sell for what they think it should sell for, if they're not reviewing that data with you, then that means that they pulled comps before they went there. They had a predetermined idea of what your home would sell for. And now they're just trying to find the number that will get you to agree to hire them. Make sure that their opinion of value is a true opinion of value that's backed by data because that data is going to have to be supported. It's going to have to be supported 
when the agent representing the buyer looks at data, and it's gonna have to be supported again when the appraiser looks at the data to determine value. So have an in-depth pricing conversation with that agent. We're gonna leave it there. I'm gonna come back. We're gonna go through a few more questions that I would ask if I were interviewing an agent to sell my house. So stick around. This is the Brian Beatty Real Estate Show on the Big Talker 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Remember, if you wanna reach out to me, 843-800-0065 is my phone number. Call or text 843-800-0065. Or check us out online, listingsincharleston.com. That's listingsincharleston.com. And finally, you can send me an email if that's easier for you. Brian with an I, Brian at Brian Beatty, B-E-A-T-T-Y, team.com. Stick around. We'll be right back.